for an everyday person with diabetes, what would you say are the most common signs when you're looking at your glucose over the last few days or weeks uh, that tell you that your basal insulin is off? Certainly look at what's happening overnight. Um, if there's a lot of variability overnight where you, you rise and then come down or you fall and then come up, when there's nothing going on, you're not eating, you're not exercising, there's no stress, that's a sign that the system is putting out a lot of little fires through the course of the night. If you find that during the day going into meals, your glucose is not steady, that it's rising or falling, that's also a sign because theoretically the bolus you gave at the last meal should have cleared by then. The carbs should be mostly done digesting by then. So you should be stable going into meals. So those are good ways of knowing. Another thing that people can look at is if you download your, your pump or if you look at the stats on your pump, it'll show you what percentage of your insulin is basal and what percentage of it is bolus. Now, there's this preconceived notion that it's supposed to be 50-50, and that's not true. It's a very individualized kind of thing. I find for most people with type 1, it's closer to 40% basal and 60% bolus. But even that's going to be affected by what someone's diet looks like. I don't know about you. I'm a carbaholic. <laughs> I eat a lot of carbs. <laughs> My basal is a very small percentage because I bolus a lot. But people on lower carb diets, the basal is going to be a higher proportion because they're not bolusing that much. So if somebody's on, on an average diet, they, you know, they consume between, let's say, 100 and 200 grams of carb a day, and their basal is 25% of their insulin, and they're experiencing a lot of high glucose, the basal is probably too low.